Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to talk about unit 6.1, 6.2 and the things that we know about unit 7. Unity's roadmap is set and we know a few things about what they are planning in the future versions. So without further ado, let's jump in. As you know, Unity 6.1 is in the supported state. It is not yet in long-term support. And according to some content creators, it may never be, uh, there may never be a long term support before version 6.3, but it is still in the supported version, so we can take a look at its new interesting features. Then there are a number of new features in Unity 6.1, but I would like to start with the one related with the performance. So, in terms of performance, one of the major new features is called variable rate shading you know the lighting is per pixel in other words for each pixel that you see in the screen there is shading there is some calculation related with the lighting with the shadows with the bumps with the normals or the different things like water rain snow or anything of that sort so this shading is done in the pixel level but with variable rate shading, this may no longer be the case. Now Unity allows us to make less number of calculations, so we no longer have to make one calculation per pixel. Depending on the setting, it can be a quarter or one sixteenth of a pixel. For example, we can make it calculated, we, we can make one calculation per four pixels or one calculation per 16 pixels which reduces the necessity of GPU calculations dramatically. If you make it one fourth, it will require one calculation per four pixels. Variable rate shading is not a magic button that you press once and get immediately skyrocketing results. Instead, it is an optimization technique and this is where you can download it from. You can make your tests, put your hands on, so I will include the link in the description. In this scene, you see there is motion blur. And scenes like that are perfect use cases for variable rate shading. Because the effect is already blurring the visuals and it is a perfect spot for hiding small details. It could lower the quality if we would have applied this in the sharper regions of the graphics. But when we are applying in the blur, then it will hide the possible artifacts of our effect. On the top right, you see a debug screen. This debug screen shows where the effect is applied, where it is not applied, and where the Unity did not apply it. Green is the area where the least number of shading calculations are applied. Blue is the place more or less the most intact. And the red area is in between the green and blue. The magic trick here is the motion blur. Because when some part of the screen is blurred, it will be less likely for people to realize the reduction of quality in these parts of the screen. Although this effect may not look very nice on all types of screens and all types of games, it will definitely uh, make it will definitely make no difference and it will ne definitely be not noticeable in some screens and some games, so it still provides it still has room to provide some uh, dramatic improvement on your game's performance. There was supposed to be some numbers somewhere here. Uh, here, yeah. We are going to compare the numbers. When it is uniform one by one, this means no effect is applied. The total CPU time is 11.3 milliseconds. So it will take 11 milliseconds to make it. But when it is uniform four by four, which means one shading is calculated per four pixels, it will be 51% faster. And in another approach named motion base, it is, uh, it is still a lot faster than the one without the variable rate shading. Here in this official forum thread, you can find more detailed information about the variable rate shading. I am going to leave the link of this thread in the description. Okay, now let's talk about Unity 6.2. In Unity 6.2, there are not a ton of new features. And one of these few features is the Deferred Plus Rendering Path. 
maybe I should explain what a rendering path a bit in URP's forward rendering path. All lights are combined into an array and every pixel the lighting is calculated only once. This is what makes URP special. In this rendering path, there can only a number of some certain lights can affect one object. Its default should be four and it can be incremented up to eight. No, not more than this number of lights can light an object in URP. But in deferred rendering path, there is no number of lights which can affect an object. Any number of lights can affect an object. Although deferred is not a magic button, uh, which uh, only you press and uh, release, the, removes the number of max lights. Uh, it has its own limitations and it has its own drawbacks, but it still provides you a clean interface, which can remove the limitation of how many lights can affect an object. Let's say you would like to light a Christmas tree in your scene uh, with 300 lights uh, in a cord. Um, in forward or forward plus rendering paths, it's impossible to make it. Um, you can make some uh, workarounds. For example, you could put three different lights, uh, which uh, each in a different color. Then it could look like a hundred or a few hundred lights is lighting your Christmas tree, but this is a fake and trained eyes will be able to understand the difference. In order to achieve such effects, the deferred rendering path is the surefire method to do it. Because in uh, deferred rendering path, there is no limitation for the number of lights. And when it comes to forward plus, what, what is so special is as you see here, uh, the screen is divided into boxes or some squares. Okay, one meter, one meter, one by one by one squares, uh, cubes actually, not squares. Uh, that the, the the number of maximum lights which can affect an object is applied directly to those areas, to those squares, cubes. Okay, uh, in the forward rendering path. Uh, the limitation is affected per object. But if your object is too big, and for example, let's say uh, you have a big shop, okay, big tavern, uh, and if you export it from a 3D, uh, 3D application as a whole, as a bulk, then probably the number of four or eight lights limitation uh, will not be enough for you. In this case, Forward Plus can really help. Uh, it divides screen the, the, the scene into equal parts and uh, the maximum number of lights can apply to each one of these uh, instead of per object. So it can come very handy when it comes to realistic lighting. Okay, when we come to Deferred Plus, now uh, the difference here is uh, in the transparent phase. When it is Deferred Rendering Pad, uh, rendering of transparent object is a nightmare. It is very complicated and it is very time consuming. So in deferred plus mode, now uh, it falls back to the forward plus rendering path when it comes to rendering the transparent objects and falls back to the forward plus when they are transparent. Okay, it seems I forgot one thing from 6.1. In Unity 6.1, uh, there is a special feature called project auditor package. Uh, this actually uh, generates a report you about the bottlenecks and the low performance things in your project. I tried it personally, uh, but actually I did not get awesome results. I can't say it didn't give me any good results, but uh, it was a lot below my expectations. It gave me some good results. For example, uh, it detected uh, a few start and update methods of mine uh, that I have made but did not put any content in it. There were no comments, no statements inside. Uh, it warned me that I should remove them because they were uh, eating up some small performance. Yeah, that was nice, but I expected it to point out the bottlenecks of my renderings, the things that I can do better in my scene, like some lighting optimizations, some uh, object placements, or in my code, I required some, on purpose, I made some Unity code which could be speed up by 
object pooling but I am afraid it could not detect them gave me some uh, very bare warnings and some small optimization tips but the most things uh, most potential was still in the scene actually this is just version 1.0.1 yet I am sure they will improve in time uh, although it does not do very good at the time being for the time being according to my opinion uh, I think it still has good potential to create valuable information so I am sure it will do better in time okay back to 6.2 as you know DirectX 12 support was on beta uh, it was an experimental feature in the earlier versions uh, but after 6.1 uh, it is going to be in the stable version and it is going to be the default rendering engine across all pipelines as you see in this official uh, blog page of the unity uh, which i am going to leave the link in the description uh, even in the default state uh, the directx 12 has uh, a major performance impact uh, rather than uh, its predecessor as you see in this hdrp terrain demo uh, the frame rendering time is a lot lower when it comes to directx 12 actually directx 12 has so many uh, exciting features uh, like improvement ray tracing capabilities uh, but even without them it still outperforms DirectX 11. Uh, this is the, the the major reason of this is the multi-threaded rendering. The the DirectX 12 can use the benefit of multiple CPU and GPU cores a lot better than DirectX 11. All right, another big focus of point uh, version 6.2 is AI. AI is rebranded. Actually, it is no longer Muse AI, but it's divided into several parts as follows. The first one is called Assistant. It replaces Muse Chat. It will generate you some code, fragments, animations, and etc. Uh, more or less the same functionality with Muse Chat. The next one is called the Generators. Actually, it is a rebranded version of Unity Muse's Sprite texture and animation you can ask it to generate sprites textures and animation like for example generate me a sprite sheet for a fireplace textures uh, when you type it it will generate you a series of uh, images finally the last one is the inference in inference engine uh, it is a rebranded version of sentis formerly sentis it is focused on a local ai model Actually, the work on the AI is not just rebranding. Unity improves all of them. Uh, they are the, the they are newly trained models. You can expect to have better responses and uh, better generated results from these these AI models. These models will outperform and they will be better in every possible direction than its predecessor. Another exciting feature is the automatic loads level of details you know the level of detail is a lower detail version of the same model uh, you know that when an object is getting far from camera these details are being obscured so it is possible to switch the model with a lower detailed one uh, without being noticed by the player this way you can gain a lot in performance and in video memory usage so uh, switching models with the lower detailed versions uh, by them there by they are getting far from camera uh, is a well known and widely used optimization technique unity does this automatically uh, from this version on you don't need to make manual loads when you import your model into unity uh, unity will itself generate automatic loads and it will take care of this which will Im improve your game's performance without being have to make some extra work for it this may not sound a big improvement because uh, this is not the first time uh, you may be hearing about loads uh, it is not unity's invention uh, but uh, it can be a huge time saver also uh, in terms of quality uh, you may not to make the loads appropriate uh, in terms of performance and in terms of quality uh, with this new improvement you don't have to worry about their quality uh, or their making or their size unity uh, will do everything automatically for you if you need to know more about how loads operate in unity uh, you can refer to the documentation
Okay, finally about Unity 7. Unity 7 won't be a game changer, but it is going to be a game breaker. Yes, not a game changer, but it is going to be a game breaker because Unity has so crazy plans about it. Uh, according to Unity, they are planning to merge all different rendering pipelines into one. So everything is going to be different with Unity 7. Uh, you know, now there are more than one rendering pipelines built in URP, HDRP, and you can create your own. Uh, but from Unity 7 on, things will be different. There is going to be only one pipeline. Again, uh, I don't know why are doing are they doing that, but uh, according to them, they will keep uh, developing the uh, 6.x versions because uh, there are, there are going to be two different types of operations in one Unity version seven. I mean, uh, there will be no different pipelines, but uh, because of the backwards compatibility, they do not want to destroy all the bridges apparently. So uh, they will keep maintaining. Uh, 6.x versions for a long time yeah i don't know if it is going to be good or bad but all the assets all the previous projects will have to be uh, redone up to some extent maybe not from scratch uh, but um, there has to be huge changes uh, of course especially uh, pre-made or um, pre-bought assets uh, the assets that we bought from asset store um, will no longer be working for uh, unity 7 because it's going to be a huge change so this is all we know about unity 7 and i'm going to keep updating you as much as we learn new things about it if you have found value in this video uh, please consider leaving a like or subscribe to the channel so see you in the next one